My name is Ita McCarthy. I teach Italian and translation at the University of Durham and I co-direct Early Modern Keywords. I've recently published a book on one such early modern key word. The Grace of the Italian Renaissance shows how grace rose to prominence in 15th and 16th century Italy, where it became a term of excellence used to describe the best artists, writers, musicians, courtiers and ladies at court. Grace, in all these areas of human activity and social life, was the ultimate mark of distinction. But grace was also the concept that was most hotly contested and widely debated amongst intellectuals and religious figures arguing for reform and counter-reform of the Catholic Church in Rome. My book explores the different meanings of grazia in all of these contexts, and it also restores the dialogue between the arts and disciplines in which grace rose to prominence as a key word which crude tones and colours and shades of meaning that rendered it ever more pleasurable while notoriously difficult to pin down. There's perhaps no better image for grace than the three graces of classical antiquity. These classical goddesses abound in the visual and verbal arts of 15th and 16th century Italy. In the image before you, they crown the allegory of April in the fresco cycle of the Salone dei Mesi in the Palazzo Schifanoia of Ferrara. Here, as in classical antiquity, they accompany Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. In the upper layer, they stand, as they did in classical antiquity, for the dynamism that renders beauty truly pleasurable and for the reciprocity at the heart of love. They stand too for the graceful effects of music, poetry and the arts, and their power to seduce, to woo and to charm. But there's more to the graces than that. On the streets of Ferrara, they oversee the activities of Borso d'Este, the region's duke. See how he presides over festivities such as the Palio di San Giorgio and courtly pursuits such as falconry. See his public displays of beneficence, how he hands a coin to his court gesture. Each of these actions has a correspondence in the figure of the three graces. Their circular dance also enacts the circularity of benefits, graces and favours with which Borso d'Este wishes to be identified in this fresco. The circulation of benefits that compels the citizens of Ferrara to express their gratitude in the word grazie. The semantic range of grace is expressed in the horizontal layers of the fresco. And it's there too in the verticality of the image, in the top-down form of benevolence that issues from the dancers at the top to the people down below. The vertical axis inscribed in the fresco epitomizes as well Christian grace that flows from the highest heavens to Christian believers down below. As one enters through the doorway to the left of the allegory in April and looks up at the coffered ceiling, one sees three higher graces the theological virtues of faith, hope and charity. The three graces of classical antiquity connect up with the Christian graces in just a few steps. Daily life in Ferrara joins up with the supreme realm of God's gifts and graces. Capturing in visual form the semantic richness of grace is clearly an objective of the fresco in the Salone dei Mesi of Palazzo Schifanoia. Perhaps their ability to mean so much also explains why so many other Renaissance artists sought to make the deities their own. That may also explain the proliferation of texts seeking to understand how grace is to be achieved in art, at court, in the spiritual life and in literature. It certainly explains why my book seeks to understand grace, not just in the words of the Italian Renaissance, but in its images as well and why it ends as it begins with the perennial dance of spring on the walls of the Palazzo Schifanoia.